Good day, my fellow internet friends. Before we get into episode one, I'd like to introduce myself and this show. I'm Gabe Jones. I'll be your host for Into Final Space. I'm an avid science fiction reader, watcher, etc. I also love cartoons, so when Final Space flashed across my gelatinous marbles for the very first time, my, my, I was intrigued. Now, I'd like to give my two cents on this incredible show. Before we get a, uh, taste of what the glorious second season has to offer. Why don't we step back and appreciate the beauty of season one? I'll be throwing out some of my own theories, some fan theories, as well as just going over what happened in each of the episodes. But to truly appreciate the beauty of what we got in the first season, let's take a step back to before Final Space. So, welcome to the very first episode of this brand new show, Into Final Space. Buckle up your butt cheeks, because we're light folding right into episode one. This is an origin story. We're best to start on this journey, but the man who birthed this beautiful show from his mind fortress. I'm talking about the Tennessee Wonder Child, Olin Rogers. Olin Rogers is a Nashville native. He got his start on the YouTubes, that glorious site where we plunge ourselves into hours upon hours of cat videos and TV news bloopers. He began with the comedy trio Balloon Shop. Soon after, we find Rogers hitting the road for his million-dollar solo career. Who are we kidding? This is YouTube we're talking about. But he did find success as he stalked the waters of YouTube comedy. Over the years, Rogers' fan base grew. He expanded into comedic stories about his life, short films, and small animated projects. This is where I found him in 2014. A good friend of mine turned on the snack thief at a birthday party sleepover. Oh, that was a bad idea. I have been hooked ever since. I kept up with Olin as times progressed and I was beamed up out of that awkward time of middle school. As I solidified my interests through high school, Olin Rogers and his projects fell into my top list. The man has climbed to over 996,000 subscribers on YouTube. The first taste of Final Space came in the form of a conceptual cartoon that was first released before my time when I was following Olin. But when that pilot came out, great Grandor's glove. My first taste of Final Space, hey that rhymes, was the pilot. But six years before, Olin was creating the world we now know as Final Space. Carry Space, on the other hand, hit the internet on May 4th, 2010. This was Roger's first cartoon and was animated by himself and Dan Brown, who would later go on to help him with the pilot. Roger said in his description, Just like with every cartoon, they get better over time. This is purely for fun, nothing more. If only he would have known, right? The first episode gave us early concepts of Final Space's title characters, Gary and Mooncake. Rogers planned nine more episodes, but only three total episodes were published, as he pretty much hated the project, as he said in Final Space Origins behind the scenes. Instead, we got something even better than those seven episodes, a pilot. For fans of Gary Space, I believe the product was very much worth the wait. Olin dropped Final Space cartoon pilot to YouTube April 5th, 2016. Now, warning. This will contain spoilers for the pilot, so if you've never had the chance to check it out, I highly recommend pausing the show, go watch it for yourself, get your own background, and come back. Now let's get into it some. I'll do some quick highlights of the plot points and my own little thoughts here and there. Rogers released the 7 minute pilot with the help of New Form Digital and Studio Joho, which would also go on to help him in the pilot, with original music from Jake Sidwell. We'll see him later by the way. Jake is an incredible composer who helped with the entire series. The Final Space pilot opens with a monologue from Gary talking about Final Space. It follows very similarly to the episode openers in Season 1 with Gary floating through space with his oxygen leaking out. So then we pan into a wrecked early concept of what will end up being the Galaxy 1. Honestly, I really like the original design for the ship way better than the serialized version but I think the Galaxy 1 of the TV show more reflects the prison ship as compared to the more battle-ready cruiser that the pilot introduces. But the ship is moving into a self-destruct in less than five minutes, and we finally come to Gary, who looks very much like his TV counterpart, holding a presumably dead avocado. Another personal opinion, I also really like avocado design in the pilot. Um, not to say I don't love it in the serialized version, I just... I like Pilot Avocado. Um, so then we move into Gary asking Hugh about the Temporal Worm, which of all creatures in this universe is probably one of my favorite things. 
The creativity of pairing the wormhole with an actual creature is just super cool, and kudos to Olin for doing that. And then we're on the Lord Commander's ship. Once again, creativity points to Olin. The ship is beautiful. I love the pink crystallized. Uh, it's just it's it's a really fun to look at. Uh, one note to the character designers on the show: um, bring back the monocle. Lore Commander needs the monocle. I freaking love the mechanical electronic monocle. It's, it's really awesome. Uh, otherwise, the Lore Commander has pretty much kept his design through both the pilot and the TV show. One thing I'm absolutely fine with that they did was Lore Commander is much less comedic in the show and his minions are way cooler. And, you know, it's it's just an interesting shift from the kind of comedic character that we get in the pilot as opposed to the completely evil, sadistic, crazy uh, lore commander that we get in the actual show. So here's where we get a totally different Gary from the actual television show. In the pilot, Gary is part of the Infinity Guard. This is entirely different than the TV show, which is based around the fact that Gary is a prisoner of the Infinity Guard. The pilot also seems to show Queen as higher in the Infinity Guard than she is in the show. Uh, she seems to be more of a pilot as opposed to the higher ranks that we see in some of the episodes. As opposed to here, she seems pretty high up, if not the top. Also, note Gary's last name in the show is way cooler. Gary Goodspeed kind of pulls off the tongue and definitely beats out Gary Bisbee in my book any day. Then we're flashing into Avocado, Gary, Mooncake, and Kevin on a mission. Kevin and Gary's relationship here is the absolute same as the show, and I, I love it. Kevin will always be such an easily hated character. Um, and just, I'm going to find a way to get my foot dislodged and relodged in between your fart sandwich. Just comedy. We love comedy. Also, we move back into the room that Gary is in and find Kevin is dead. Once again, A-okay with me. Uh, now again, another flashback of Gary and Mooncake on a mission. Absolutely love these two together. They are one of the best duos on TV. Mooncake is just so dangerous and adorable, and Gary is just a perfect mash between this strange alien creature uh, and his comedic, adventurous, but leader role. It's just, ah, I I absolutely love Mooncake. Um, and he really does not change his design from the pilot to the show, which was great. A sh slightly darker shade of green, I think, but otherwise he's the absolute same, which is, once again, fine with me. One thing I'm glad they did change is Gary's heads-up display. Uh, in the pilot, it was just too much for me. Uh, the bouncing and flashing about um, is much more subdued, and that may be the color change as well. Um, but I, I like the heads-up display from the from the show. I do love Olin's use of hue more than just an expositional AI, but rather a character in both the pilot and the show. It's so often we find these computers that are just kind of moving plot around and Hugh and Gary have this really great relationship and Hugh and the rest of the crew do and uh, it's, it's just really fun to watch. Okay, I still have absolutely no clue what happened to Quinn during the pilot. Uh, Olin mentioned that this is somewhere near the end, wanting to bounce back to the beginning. Uh, New form told him to start in the middle, and he got really upset about it, so he said no, uh, which made New form really upset. Um, and so he said he pondered it and then jumped to the end. Um, but when we find Quinn in the pilot, Hugh doesn't know who she is. And so some theories from me. Um, I personally have no clue, but I'll just throw some stuff out there. Um, she was killed, uh, and erased from the Infinity Guard databanks. I don't know. 
Uh, she may have disappeared into final space, or maybe she was eaten by a temporal worm, and she, you know, she doesn't exist on that timeline. Unfortunately, the only semi-answer we get is a small flashback to the Lord Commander blowing up a planet using a laser powered by Mooncake. Um, and a little flash of Quinn in a window, and Gary kind of looking out sad out of the... I don't know. Uh, so, did she die? Maybe... Who knows? Um, so then we end off the pilot with Gary flying out into space uh, with the Lord Commander realizing he's lost and he's finally eaten by the temporal worm and he tells himself to remember everything uh, even though he says that he's only going to remember these fragment fragmentary pieces of what happened. Um, so yeah, the pilot was really incredible. It had me pumped. Um, I wanted this to be a show so badly when I saw it for the first time, and it turns out my dreams were about to come true. December 2nd, 2016. Just a normal day until I got a hit by a notification that Olin Rogers had just posted a video. Olin had been off the net for a little bit now, so when I opened it up, I almost screamed. The video was titled, Final Space is a TV Show, all caps, 10 exclamation marks. I have never seen one man so happy. Olin's excitement still warms my heart. What was also very exciting is that the show was going straight to series in just two years. Even better, it was Conan O'Brien's company that had picked it up. Olin announced Conan would be coming on as a producer, and Newform, who you remember worked on the pilot, was joining the team. Keep in mind, the pilot had just dropped in April, and in nine months the show got picked up. That is incredible in the world of cartoons. Olin starts crying when he talks about how Conan said he'd had this unique voice, and it's just a really sweet moment in the video. Even crazier, for his first cartoon... Final Space ended up in a bidding war between six huge networks from FX to Fox to YouTube Red. Rogers and TBS came to a deal to make Final Space an original series. He announced the availability on air, online, and on the TBS app, providing multiple avenues to watch. He also hoped that at some point it would come to Netflix, and, just recently, it's dropped internationally on a few Netflix platforms, hopefully coming to the U.S. very soon. Final Space was going to be a hit, and it was about to get even better. So now we're in 2017. October 6 comes around, and TBS drops the first sneak peek. Oh my gosh, I didn't think it'd get any better than the pilot, but boy was I wrong. It was beautiful, the scenes of action were intense, the settings were incredible, the new character designs were stunning. But what was probably the most exciting thing was the cast list. Olin Rogers, Fred Armisen, Tom Kenny, David Tennant, Tika Sumter, Stephen Young, Cote Galloway, John DiMaggio, Keith David, Ron Perlman, Caleb McLaughlin, Gina Torres, Shannon Purser, Andy Richard, and Conan O'Brien. Then we get these beautiful shots of the Galaxy 1 light folding. Then, January 11, 2018 rolls around and we get an official trailer drop with a release date of February 26th. It opens with Hugh speaking to a stranded Gary in space before flashing through some action sequences. Then we find that Gary is not the captain, but instead a prisoner, a definite shift for the pilot. We get to find out that Gary is oblivious to the fact that Mooncake has this apparently intense power, and he has a conversation with Avocado that's hilarious. Then we get Quinn and Tribor. Both of these characters are so good in the show. Tribor is hilarious, and Quinn makes for a great female protagonist. It turns out that in the show, Final Space will be a breach in space that must be closed in order to keep Earth from being sucked in. More action. Gary's missing an arm, which explains the metal arm he has throughout the trailer? Lord Commander is super not, school, not cool. Scary, evil, and I love it. Big Man and Ice Cube with emotional dialogue. I guess we'll figure out what that is later. 
avocado and a new small cat man, and they share a very emotional moment. More action, more lasers, more swelling music. My gosh, do I love the colors of this show. It is so beautiful. And now, we're about to get our taste into episode one. But, you'll have to wait till next time. Thanks for joining me on this first episode of Into Final Space. I can't wait to see where this show goes. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Into Final Space. And I'll see you next time for a recap of episode one of Final Space.